please. That's absolutely marvellous. A little abrupt, the end of the clapping, but nonetheless, quite good. Thank you very much for being at home. I know that you're going to be pleased about this. We're going to put eels on toast. I'm going to teach you how to make bread. I'm going to make bread myself. What's the matter? Open my... I only have a tie. Look at me, I look like a daffodil. It's Trina again. Shall we, shall we go off now to Amsterdam? They make a speciality of them here, you know, smoking eels. And all those people, weren't they nice to wave for you? It was nice. And this fellow came cycling past, and we thought he looked marvellous. And he'd just gone past, and he stopped on his bike, and the cameraman was still pointing in his direction, because he thought he might bike over the end of the wharf. <laughs> and he said, obviously, there's a lot of tourists around here. So he said, gets back on it again, and he's off. <laughs> so he, he did it three times. That's the funny thing about it. He stopped, and then back... <laughs> You know, I did. It worked out about three dollars a cycle, backwards and forwards. Anyway, there's this very charming lady with a rather odd hat. But look at this. Does it remind you of anybody? Eh? It was that fun because you see, Trina um, is Dutch, uh, part Dutch anyway, part French, part Irish, and part Romanian. Uh, I was eating the flowers because uh, it was such a. <laughs> It was such a long time, the service. Uh, have, a, have a piece, darling. Gosh, it tasted gorgeous to begin with. The Hotel Spanda, that's what it's called, this place. And it's a kind of a place where all, well, frankly, it's a, it, it's a coach trippers place. You know, everybody, big coaches pull up from Lancashire. And, um, and you sit there, and th this, is, uh, this is water, which they have, it's most odd water. And, ooh, <coughs> it, it, it helps you face such things as smoked eel. Uh, the smoked eels, incidentally, came up from Turkey. And they come up on, on block, so to speak. And, uh, and then they're let to swim around in Dutch water to get the flavor. This is true, because they can't find them nowadays uh, as much as they used to, which is rather difficult, isn't it? Goodbye. Right, you see, there's a sweet... I don't know whether you know this, but the Dutch... Do you know this, that the Dutch are the, the leading smokers of eels in the world? Yeah. Oh, you did, that's nice. <laughs> One person, yeah. Well, they, they are, they're fantastic. And they, 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 the, the, the true Dutch eel has a very sharp pointed snout. But there are big eels. And funny enough, of all the most revolting things that there are around, the eel must be one of them. I think that's rather sweet that the Dutch have this kind of an affectionate feeling for an eel. If you can imagine having an affectionate feeling for an eel. I've trodden on one once. I can't see any point of affection at all. <laughs> and uh, there's a little story told about this fellow. You know, when they go fishing along, when they're fishing sort of like this, um, in these inland seas, they always carry in their hip pocket a small flask. You've probably seen them. The stone flask with the Dutch gin. And so this sort of hip flask, the original hip flask. That's why they've got big baggy trousers. <laughs> and apparently they fortify themselves with this and they drink during the day and fish and all that sort of thing and they have a good time. Well, apparently this chap was fishing. And this is a true Dutch story. And he was fishing like this off the top later. And uh, he wanted to have a particular type of bait, which is a small frog. Because, you know, he, he was uh, fishing and uh, that's the sort of way that they fish. It's with a small frog a particular type of fish. Isn't it marvellous? <laughs> I feel so powerful at the moment. Everybody, everybody's so wrapped. <laughs> Gift wrapped. This, now, what he did, if he looked around, and here was this enormous eel. He saw it sort of lying there, basking, looking up at him, with sort of pale <laughs> sort of eyes like that. Um, right in his mouth, right in his mouth, he had a small frog, just what he wanted. So he bent down and picked this up and tried to get this frog out of this eel. Now, the eel wasn't very happy about this. I mean, can you imagine you're eating something and somebody comes along and tries to whip it out of your mouth? And you can see how he feels. So anyway, eventually he had an idea. So he got out his very, very favorite dry gin and poured a little slug into the corner of this eel's mouth. And the eel went sort of, mm, <laughs> like that, and out came the frog. Well, he just baited this and he threw it up. He had a marvellous day fishing. <laughs> so he went to sort of sleep suddenly and he woke up this incredible sort of sensuous, 
rubbing on the side of his leg. And he looked down, and there was this eel looking up at him with another frog in his mouth. <laughs> when music's not moving him, this chef and artist finds his groove through exotic flavors. Feel more. At Ferguson Showrooms, you have a lot of choices. Good thing we have the experienced, friendly people to help you make them. But here's a choice anyone can make. For a limited time, you can get six or even 18-month financing at Ferguson Showrooms. Visit ferguson.com for more details. This is Cooking Channel. Stay hungry. need uh, first of all if you're going to, this is to make bread have you ever made is it, who's made bread in a flower pot <laughs> anybody <laughs> oh, isn't that fun good <coughs> right <laughs> so you get a flower pot and the good thing to do first of all is to rinse it out that's the first thing and if it's been used for flowers it's even better actually and then all you do is you simply scrub it out inside wash it grease it bake it 450 degree Fahrenheit oven for about half an hour. Bring it out, wash it, grease it, bake it, put it back in there. Wash it, grease it, bake it, put it back in there again. <laughs> Terrible business, but it cures it. Now, when it's cured, you then just, well, you use it. You just grease it very, very lightly on the inside and you can make marvelous flower pot bread. The kids love doing it, they really do. And it'll keep them busy for about three hours. <laughs> That's well, how long it takes to make some bread. But for some reason, everybody, including the director of this program, Marion Dunn. Now, Marion is a marvelous person, and I think we've got her interested in cooking. <laughs> and she, she, she is going to have a go at this this weekend, aren't you, Marion? Mm. Good luck. Right, so that's a quarter of an ounce of wet yeast and a teaspoonful of sugar on the top. And uh, already, if you'd be interested to have a look at that, you see it's starting to sweat already. And, and what it does, it comes up in the most extraordinary, it sort of works itself all funny in here. Let's see, how's that one going? Oh, well, not too funny, but... <laughs> now, oh, yes, that's in there, too. <laughs> uh, I have in here two pounds of all-purpose flour. And... You, it's in the warming drawer because you've got to get it warm, first of all. Now, you just simply shoot it backwards and forwards like this. White shoe all of a sudden. One for tennis. And you just simply take this flour here. Um, that's not flour, that's milk. <laughs> Two-thirds milk, one-third water. And there's exactly two and a half American cups, which is 20 fluid ounces, which is one imperial pint. <laughs> so you just pour in on top of that Okay, now by the time you leave it for 15 minutes, which is what they call a quick ferment. It's like a sort of half-hearted demonstration. Where are we? Yes, here we are. Now, now this, this is it. I mean, it's nothing to write home about, really. But, but if you overdo the yeast, which some people do, homemade bread is an impossible taste and a marvellous smell. Has anybody noticed that ever? <laughs> now what happens as a result of this is that it washes up over the side and it gradually is, is incorporated, or another word is inculcated. <laughs> At least I think it is. Have you got a Roger's Thesaurus? <laughs> no? You have? Well, I, I wasn't asking you. I was, <laughs> I was wondering, you have? Would you mind looking it up? Uh, inculcated. No? <laughs> well, how about, you know, when we have a small break? <laughs> yeah, fine. All right, now you just keep on stirring that until you've got half of it stirred in. Now, it must be stirred in very gently so that there are no lumps, otherwise it really won't work in the way you want it to. You understand that... Oh, I love this. It. <laughs> Reminds me of when I was a little boy and Miss made mud pies and the flower pot men were on telly. Did you ever, does anybody remember the flower pot man? Yeah. Bill and Ben, the flower pot man. Uh, what was it, Mr. Weed as well? Oh. Mr. Weed, oh, it's Alan, Mr. Weed. Oh, those were the days. What have you got now? Band of long-haired, foul-breathed people waving placards at you. 
Right. Um, what else do we put in there? Yes. Now you get a spoon and then you shovel some of the dry flour over the top. This is what they call sponging. It doesn't mean bu borrowing from your neighbours, no. <laughs> and it's the sort of thing that you do on a beach. You know, and it, it's some suntan, especially in Australia, you know. And, and they do this, they spread these palm fronds, you know, not only on Sundays either, uh, across the, the other side. And then, and then they've got this great big thing down there like this, and this, this lifesaver's walking along, chum, you know. <laughs> Gun. Fantastic seeing it done. Right, so that's put in there, and it's now left up here once again. Sorry, but I have to get up here. It's the only way I can do it. Well, I mean, you understand what I mean. This, you place that in there, and it's allowed to ferment. Now, it ferments. Oh, I'm aware. It, fer it ferments. It sponges for 15 minutes, and you find that that you sort of flowery top cracks and breaks up. Huh? Now, you just bring it out, slosh it all about, about a, you might need about two tablespoons extra for a flour, bang, 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 knead it all out, it's terribly hard work, so I bypassed that stage, <laughs> and, no, because I'm going to show you my eel, and uh, now you put it back in again, you make it into a ball, put it back in, it comes out and it proves itself, it takes two hours to prove itself. <laughs> and it comes out, it's a great, big, beautiful ball. <sighs> And you'll be very pleased and proud of it at this stage. And you, you cover it, by the way. It must be covered. Um, <laughs> hanging on to me like that. Right. And, um, and, and you just knead it. You have to knead it to do it, I'll tell you. <laughs> Smart Tips, presented by Glade Sense and Spray. Water reads all zeros like purified bottled water. Other filter pitchers don't even come close. It's bottled water taste without the cost and weight. You are the business expert. We are the marketing experts. Together, we will grow your sales. Time Warner Cable Media Sales has over 40 of the most popular TV networks, video on demand, interactive marketing, and internet opportunities, giving us the unique ability to target your consumers by geography, demographics, and lifestyle. Put your message in front of the consumers who matter most. Let Time Warner Cable Media Sales become your marketing solutions expert. Oh, yeah! You want water? We're the one. Not Soak City in Orange County, there are gallons of ways to get drenched and cool off. It's a whole lot of splash for the cash. So come on, get wet at Soak City. Oh, yeah. Best deals at Knots.com. this now you get you have to get a pair of scales at this stage unless you're very good at cutting things into four now I cut I, I roll it in a sort of round thing like this and then you've got to weigh it because otherwise oh dear um, ten ounces that's exactly right ten ounces that's exactly right <laughs> 11 ounces, that's a bit much. <laughs> now you roll them all. This is much more fun. Roll it. And it's only experienced bakers or roues, you know, who can do this properly. And um, so you just do it little round balls and. Um, Fine. Now you make a little cut on the top. Yeah, and it's Easter all over again. This, now all you have to do is just, I've only got a couple of them because I've got the other ones in them. Right, so you just go. If you want to make a double one. Now, oh, look. Right. A bit of clay broke off from underneath. No, it does work awfully well because when you consider it a baker's oven, oven so I mean it's got to work well have it up it's put up there it's proved for another 30 minutes you understand it was proved for two hours before before I started knocking it around and <laughs> and then it's shoved into an oven 
for 40 minutes at 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And incidentally, don't be worried about the hole in the bottom. Uh, this one's just a little bit worrisome. But um, don't worry about that, because bread sticks if it's a bit loose. Right, now when you've finished it, what it looks like exactly is this. And you, you just knock them like that, and that, that's, no, no, they're, they're rather ducky, aren't they? Um, and I'll tell you one of the beautiful things about it is that they're crisp and crunchy. Sounds like an advertisement for something which isn't good for you. Now look at that, look at that lovely texture, that nice even texture, and will you please listen? <laughs> just listen to this sound, you don't hear it much nowadays. Do you? Do you? Nice. Correct. Um, gosh, that's nice. That's really good. I'm pleased about that. There aren't those big holes. You buy loaves now, loaves of bread now, and they're all full of holes. This. Now, here I've got um, a grill rack. That slips underneath a grill. You can't get it. That's the one thing that's a trouble with, um, with making that kind of... Here's an eel, by the way. Oh, come on, that was silly. I mean, you know, it's perfectly edible. I can't get any, can't even get me knife into it. This must have come out the local river. I don't think I like that one at all. Right. So, how's it going? Huh? You're right down there and you're looking and making sure. Because I burn toast so badly. I can't. Now, uh, by the way, smoked eel is so much cheaper um, and I can hear you say oh, I'm not surprised either <laughs> there it is look at that look look think of the bags you can make with it and all sorts of things <laughs> and this this eel is so much cheaper than smoked salmon um, which is about six dollars isn't it five or six dollars a pound something like that <sighs> I don't see better to get anything off that at all <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what sauce I use on them anyway. <laughs> um, can you imagine that? I can see everybody at the local PTA tomorrow saying, Do you know what he did yesterday? <laughs> Half an hour. Skinned an eel and made a piece of toast. That's all that's happened. <laughs> that's right. This, um, now, now, where's my spoon gone? Right. Two teaspoons full of mustard. And... Two ounces of butter in the bottom there, two teaspoonfuls of horseradish. Now that's the pickled horse, you know, that stuff. <laughs> two teaspoonfuls of, roughly two teaspoonfuls, of uh, parsley. Two fluid ounces of cream. Now that is the sauce, which is absolutely indescribable. <laughs> I think it's all right. It doesn't look as if it's even got a mild suntan, to be quite frank. <laughs> Just have a... Oh, oh. Freshly ground pepper got in there. And that is a sauce that you put over smoked tea. It's going to take me a bit of time to do that, but I would like to show you my toast. <laughs> you, you were all... Oh, what beautiful toast. Look. Oh. oh, and it's all mine, look. <laughs> we use rolled steel dishes just in case when you serve this. Don't cut the crusts off. <laughs> There's two pieces of toast just for you. <laughs> oh, my. A recipe you can't overlook the possibility that down the road, if you needed some kind of long-term care, everything you've planned for could be at risk. So I got long-term care insurance. Help protect your plans with AARP Long-Term Care Insurance from Genworth Financial. It can help cover the high costs of long-term care, like assisted living or in-home long-term care. It's a choice we made for each other and our kids. Call now to get your free information kit. The national average cost of care is well over $75,000 a year. And generally, it's not covered by health insurance or Medicare. AARP endorsed long-term care insurance can help protect your assets, your family, the things you've worked hard to build. Choose from a range of affordable plans, including plans with nursing facility and in-home long-term care coverage.
And typically, the younger and healthier you are when you apply, the lower your rates will be. Call for your free information kit to get started. These plans are offered by Genworth Life Insurance Company, a leader in long-term care insurance with over 35 years experience. And they're endorsed by AARP. But you don't need to be a member to call. Long-term care is just one of those things many of us may have to face. If you have dreams, and we all do, now is the time to protect them. I enjoy today because tomorrow has a plan. Help protect your plans with AARP-endorsed long-term care insurance. Underwritten by Genworth Life Insurance Company. And in New York, Genworth Life Insurance Company of New York. Call now or go online for free information. This is Cooking Channel. Stay hungry. All right. Now this is... This is no trouble, as you've obviously seen. None whatsoever. You've got to get the bones out of it. Now it smokes and it's delicate and it smokes over oak chips or it sometimes can be over hickory. I'm amazed by people who get upset about this sort of thing. I might have, you might have tuned in one time when I told you about the occasion upon which... Thank you. <laughs> I don't want to eat it just yet. <laughs> upon which I, I really had uh, a snake brought to my table because I'd been told in Hong Kong this was a great delicacy. They brought the snake to your table, they kill it there, and then they drain it into a wine glass so that you have a wine glass full of blood. And they just put a dash of Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce in it, a touch of Tabasco and a little squeeze of garlic. Absolutely. <laughs> So lovely. <clears throat> now um, it is. It does tend to be a trifle rich, smoked eel, and because of that, this magnificent mixture, which is this combination of the horseradish, mm, really bites back at you. Mm -hmm. You can wind up with a frog in your mouth too. <laughs> Try it sometime. I tell you, you know, especially the youngsters. They're the people who'll enjoy this. Okay. God bless you, and thanks for being with me. <laughs> Now, now try some of the bread. <laughs> <laughs> 